I don't want to do either of those things. Yeah, but if you had to, though. We set the scene. We have a choice. We must decide on the correct answer. I'm Kyle. And I am Nathan. No, oh, that was a that was a nice one. And uh, this is <laughs> I almost didn't say it. And this is if you had to though. So I'm still recovering from you going ah at my voice. It was it was heartwarming, Kyle. It made me feel really good about myself. That was probably the nicest. And I'm Nathan that you've done so far. <laughs> okay. I think this is a whole new side of you coming through, Nathan. Yes, I mean I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to rebrand after after the last time and the unpleasantness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think this is a whole new start for you, this episode. <laughs> it's going to be all... Uh, I was going to say sunshine and puppy dogs, but I guess... <laughs> it's, best to, it's best to keep the puppy dogs far away. Any animals in general. I'm like an um, alcoholic trying to be sober. I should stay out of pubs. Yeah. And, um, you know, puppy palaces. Puppy palaces? I was trying to think of a place that had lots of puppies. I guess I could have said the pet store. <laughs> so the premise of the show is that we create scenarios for each other, resulting in two possible outcomes. We'll discuss each outcome's pros and cons and decide definitively on the correct answer. Yes. We will, we will come to the most logical, thought-based, philosophically enlightened decision. Yeah. We don't take the responsibility lightly. You know, we... We know that we have an important role in society, leading all you. You're like precious little lambs, and you need guiding through life and all the problems, like being abducted by aliens and having your, your head replaced with a cow. Yeah. Or marrying a bunch of bees. Everyone needs to know how to deal with these kind of problems in life. We we do take a long time, and we, you know, people wonder why the podcast takes. It's like, oh, why don't you just do like a twenty minute podcast? No, we want to be definitely one hundred percent sure that we have given you the correct advice. Because... What you don't hear, what we've edited out, is the hours of debate, really intelligent debate where we could sit and consider all the possible outcomes arduous thinking and debating and and thinking about things and coming up with ideas for things <laughs> and pondering yeah we we would never end this podcast without I, mean, I have the very scientific method of i've got action figures of you and me kyle and i play out the scenarios uh, i have hand puppets <laughs> That's much better. It's much more scientific. Yeah, well, especially considering they're both wearing those little um, mortarboards on their heads. Mortarboards? Yeah, uh, like, you know, when you're a graduate at university. I, I have graduated from university somehow. God knows how. I, mean, I think they just wanted to get rid of me. <laughs> and you had a mortarboard at the graduation, surely, then? What's a mortarboard? It's like a square hat that you put on your head. Oh, one of the and you throw I, them up at the end of when everyone's yeah, graduated. We had, we had those and we threw them up. I never knew they had an official name. I just thought they were uni hats. Maybe I'm making this up. Maybe I, I, I've just invented this word. The scientific name is just those square hats. Square hat. Yeah. <laughs> we need to look up what's Latin for square hat. Who thought it was a good idea? Like, oh yeah, the, all these people they've studied and they've got a degree. What should we give them to signify this this momentous day? I don't know. And I also don't know. When, when I graduated, we did all throw up our hats in the air and then they fell at us and we all freaked out. And I was like, <laughs> so why did we do that? I'm looking back and I'm thinking, what did we expect? What did we expect was going to happen? Did we think they were going to, we were going to throw them and they would just continue to go up into the air? They're like full of helium. They just float to the ceiling and spell out happy graduation. <laughs> There's just somehow we thought that from every graduation throughout the world, they just thrown their hats into space. When you travel through space and you go through the um, the barrier between Earth and space, you just see a million what are uh, motorboards or whatever you said they were called. <laughs> motorboards. What did you say they were called? Mortarboards. What's the difference? Mortar. I mean, mortar means like um, mach like is like machine gun shells, isn't it? No, no, mortar is like a cannon shell. I always associate mortar with, uh, like, pestle and mortar. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Am I talking foreign now? <laughs> you are talking foreign. But anyway, 
How are you, Carl? How am I? Just how are you? And I don't mean in the how are you feeling. I mean how do you exist? Why? How am I? Oh, how am I here at all? Exactly. I meant it in the metaphysical. See, I know words. How can anything exist, Nathan? Ooh. Uh, shall I start my story? My wonderful, heartfelt story. Your wonderful heart. I- I'll get myself ready for a heartfelt story. I'll sit back, get my heart, I'll open up my heart. I've just jammed a fork into my chest and opened up the cavities. So you can definitely feel your heart, so it's definitely going to be heartfelt. That is the first of the lessons we're giving out to the audience today. If you really want to feel that something, if you want to open yourself up to love, you need to cut open your chest, pull out your heart, and physically hand it to someone else. Yes. Fact number 628. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've got we've gone through a lot of facts. I swear, in last episode we were only at fact forty-two. <laughs> yeah, I, I am counting all the ones that I edit out as well. Ah, uh, of course, we had to edit them out. There are some things that man is just not meant to know. We're protecting you, the audience, from our knowledge and the terrible burden that comes with our knowledge. So, if there are two things hardcore Nathan fans should know, it's that number one, Nathan loves comic books. That's is definitely a fact. That's a fact that people can add to their book. And number two, Nathan loves the dump. As in going to the dump, not taking a dump. No, going to the dump, obviously. Okay. The, the, the uh, what, what's the other word for dump? The uh, the skip. The the skip. Yeah. The junkyard. No one calls it a junkyard. <laughs> The dump. We'll that, stick with that implies dump. there's a bunch of electronics there. Usually there's like one box filled of old microwaves. Most of it is bags of rubbish. Yeah. There's lots of leaves, I've noticed as well. Like, lots of people are cutting down trees and taking them to dumps, apparently. Yeah, because nature is nature is trash. <laughs> we, we didn't establish this at this point, but Carl has a very anti-nature uh, philosophy to life. He... You know, white snow outside, cold winter air. The beautiful robins are coming out to play. But whenever Carl sees one, he just screams in furious anger. Yeah, and then I reach for my BB gun. And he throws oil over them. My stance is that all trees and forests should be cut down, turned into oil, and uh, sold for profit. Of course. Profit is the only thing that matters. I mean, what use is a living, breathing planet with lots of happy, healthy people, if someone doesn't have all the money and the planet isn't dead. Ecosystem, fuck off. (laughs) That's a message we can all stand behind. That's why I'm supporting you, (laughs) governor of the planet. (laughs) Governor of the planet, yeah, exactly. Forests, trees, plants, why do we need them? Cut them all down, send them to the tip. The tip, that's it. That's what people call a dump. <laughs> Did you forget how you began that sentence? The tip. We never said the word tip. Oh, right. The tip. Yes. Tip. You're, the, the, that is, again, that is the word people use. And, you know, I am a person. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, the number two fact. One, comic loves uh, comic. Number <laughs> one, I mean, no, I mean, comics do love me. I love comics. It's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. And it, I mean, it, it, get, it gets um, it gets raunchy. I see you round town with that brown paper bag <laughs> uh, with uh, a, you know, oblong shaped thing in it. And I'm like, yeah, he's got a comic in there. And you forbidden love. Yeah. You sneak into an alleyway. You can't wait to get home. You tear open the uh, packaging, take it out of its mint condition package uh, and just start flicking through the pages. I oh, thank God you said the pages. <laughs> let's, 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 let's move on from this sentence before it gets worse. I don't know how we're possibly going to get back on track after that very lovely image. Yeah, of your love of comic books, your, yes. your grand love of comics. It it just illustrates the fact. I mean, it's it's a metaphor, really. Um, I think that's how people should take that. Because any other way is probably a crime, and I've committed. I've I've admitted to too many crimes on this podcast. Yeah, you've got to keep some things under your cloak. It's a it's a policy. I've made a policy in life. To commit as many crimes as usual, but just not admit them. Just admit half of them, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so you you were in the dump this very morning. The tip. And the tip, the skip, 
the junkyard. Uh, you were there. This the land morning. of trash. Yeah, I mean, well, to some, to you maybe, a land of treasures. Ah. You love going to the dump to um, root around and find your next big treasure, your, you know, your holy grail, because you know that people throw out some decent stuff. Yes. So you're always, you know, showing me the latest vase or washing machine that you've uh, collected from <laughs> the dump. Um, and I'm always amazed at the condition that they're in. I mean, yeah, the washing machine only had 10 dead raccoons inside of it. I know, and they're easy to cook up and eat. <laughs> yeah, and I cooked them with the frying pan I also found at the dump. Yeah, so it had a hole in it. Who cares? With the little portable microwave I also found. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so you've got double treat there. You've got a washing machine, a frying pan, you've got your meal for the night, and you've got a vase to put the raccoon tails in. I mean, vase, surely. <laughs> vase, vase, potato, potato. I may be rooting around in the trash. <laughs> but I am a sophisticated man, Kyle. You are indeed. I pick only the finest of rubbish from the tip. So yeah, you're you're rooting around in the junk when uh, across from you, you suddenly see a tower of precariously placed rubbish. It's like um, a bed and then uh, a washing machine and then a toaster and then another bed for some reason. Uh, on top of the toaster so it's wow this is an impressive display i mean this, whoever, whoever set this up would be amazing at, at um at jenga oh yeah it is it's like what you know it, it's ready to collapse well if you pull out the microwave it all collapses yeah the microwave door is open just the right amount to hold uh everything up so yeah there's a car there's a mug there's you know you name it it's there um And it's all useless crap. You know what's good junk and what's bad junk. But at the very top, do you know what you see, Nathan? I I can't even imagine. Sitting at the very top of the mountain of crap is the very first issue of your favourite comic. (gasps) The Adventures of Snot Boy and Onion Man. (laughs) I mean, I've been looking for that forever. Well, it, and, and it's the it's the first edition, you know. It's the first and last issue because after it was released, everyone. <laughs> every, it was it yeah, it was banned from like every country. Philistines in the media dismissed it as offensive. Yeah, when really it's a work of poetry. It really is. It's beautiful. I mean, he he saves the president by sneezing on the terrorist. And killing him with his snot. So it's worth an absolute fortune. Every hero has a um, has a warm up period where they get used to being heroic. Yeah. You can't save a few lives without murdering a few innocent people. That's what I've always said. <laughs> that is what you've always said, and I never realised how how like honest you were being and how much you actually <laughs> meant that until we started this podcast. Yes, I mean, I've meant every word, Kyle, and you were horrified to find that out. Like, surely what he's saying is metaphorical. <laughs> yeah, or surely surely it's just a, just a jape, just a joke, just a... A jape? A jape, yeah, because I'm from the 1800s, Nathan. <laughs> I, don't quite, I don't like the cut of your jig. Jig? Isn't that a thing? Jib. J- oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you get get it get your eighteen hundreds lingo right, you rap scallion. <laughs> so anyway, th- this comic, you know for a fact, it's worth an absolute fortune. You know, godzillions of pounds. <laughs> I mean, you're already a really wealthy man, but of course, that, that's why I'm scooping around at the local tip. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no one ever got rich by spending money. I mean, that sentence was so. So profound. You really touched on something there, Kyle. There you go. I've d- that's a tip to everyone at home. If you want to have more money in your account, stop spending money. Spend less money. Yeah, or, or spend none at all. I mean, it's, it's revolutionary. Exactly. So yeah, you you. I mean, I mean, you don't want it for the money anyway. You want no, it I, because it's as your... we established earlier. I want it for kinky reasons. Yes, you you want to take it home and just read the hell out of that thing. <laughs> really pour over every single page and yep. word, and take in, breathe in that comic booky scent. I mean, I can't imagine it would smell nice after being in it. How long was it at the tip? 
And what else was it on top? You said there was a bed. You said there was a microwave. Was there any perishable goods in, like, bags? I mean, a, a, a bakery had thrown out an entire week's worth of stale buns. Um, so that's rotting midway through. So there is a bit of a stench to it, but you don't care about that. You want this comic. I mean, if I cared about how things smelt, I'd be in real trouble. <laughs> You wouldn't be rooting around in shit. You... I wouldn't be able to live with myself. <laughs> uh, so you climb up this mass of broken glass and exposed needles. Uh... And I I climbed up by fastening a rope out of a bunch of... Um, what's something that someone can throw away that would make up ropes? A bunch of ropes. <laughs> I fastened a rope out of ropes. <laughs> That's how intelligent I am, Kyle. I'm I'm like um what's that guy called MacGyver who can make anything out of anything. So yeah, you're you know all the glass is cutting up your skin and um, all the exposed needles are jabbing you and you're getting injected with all sorts of crap. Who knows what? But you don't care. You just want this comic book. There is nothing I would not do. No. And you finally reach the top and you grab the comic in your outstretched hands. But you were so excited and you were moving so fast that you fall forwards and you plummet towards the earth. And of course, this is a dump. So, you know, um, factories have dumped their toxic waste and their all their chemicals. And uh, there's just a big bubbling green mass on the ground and you fall directly into it. Um, and you fall into this toxic waste and uh, your body collapses into the ground and you pass out completely. Passing out seems like the, the best scenario here. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I, don't th- I don't think toxic waste would just slightly intoxicate you and you suddenly you fall asleep and have a little nap. Do, do, I, do I survive? I'm guessing I do because I'm, I'm here talking to you. And we, as we all know, these are autobiographical stories. Yeah, as I said, this happened this morning, um, <laughs> and 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 you survived, and you're back here to do the podcast. Um, well, I mean, it's the kind of commitment. I, there's nothing more important than this podcast. Yeah, so all of the toxic waste floods into your system, and it mixes with you and the comic book, strangely, and you realise that you're about to get superpowers, Nathan. Do I? I, I thought I'd realise, oh my god, I'm in a bunch of toxic waste. Oh my god, I'm so scared. But apparently I No, realize... no, no. You, you, you've you read enough comic books, Nathan. You know that if you fall in toxic waste, you're going to get uh, superpowers. I mean, the microwave all, also fell in with me, so there's also a nice bit of radiation mixed in. Radiation, yeah. You've got dirty needles full of all sorts of chemicals. As we all know, radiation plus chemicals equals superpowers. Yeah. That is another fact. All you kids out there should definitely irradiate yourselves and cover yourselves in chemicals. Do you know what this is, Nathan? This is your origin story. Wow. Your superhero origin story. Your very own. So what do I become? What magnificent, powerful creature? What champion of justice? The thing is, because you're holding this uh, issue of the adventures of uh, Snotboy and Onion Man, you realise you're going to get the choice. The powers that be are going to either give you Snotboy's powers or Onion Man's powers. Now, as you know from reading this comic religiously, Snotboy's superpower is that every time he sneezes, he sends a Spider-Man-like web from his nose, but made of snot, obviously. Obviously. Any of you people that were thinking it was going to be a spider's web shooting out of his nose are an idiot. It's obviously a giant string of snot. Yeah, exactly. Um, But it can be used almost identically to Spider-Man's webs. But not identically enough that we can get sued by Marvel. Certainly not. It's nothing to do with Spider-Man. Why did you even mention him? (laughs) Apart from you mentioning him three times. I would never mention Spider-Man ever. I mean, this is why all your pitches have failed, Kyle, when you go into big movie studios. Uh, Imagine a film. It's Spider-Man, but it's nothing to do with Spider-Man, right? (laughs) But they never seem to pick it up. Or you could pick Onion Man's powers. And you know, obviously, that Onion Man's powers are that every time he burps, a fully formed onion explodes from his mouth like a projectile. I mean, naturally, it's called it's called onion breath. His powerful onion breath. That's what bystanders cry out. Oh, he's using his powerful onion breath technique. He can belch and fire onions out of his mouth at people. 
Exactly. Um, but only when he burps. And obviously, Snot Boy can only use his uh, snot projectiles when he sneezes. So he can never take flu medicine. That That is like his kryptonite. Yeah, um, a healthy uh, body. Yeah, a healthy body is his kryptonite. So he has to be constantly in the worst possible shape. He has to be riddled with colds and flus and always feeling terrible for his powers to work. Either that or he just carries around a big pepper shaker with him and just grinds it into his nose whenever he needs to sneeze. No, no, that's not good enough. That that wouldn't give you enough snottiness. It needs to be full on cold. You're sweating. Your eyes are puffy. You Don't pretend you know more about snot. <laughs> snot boy. boy. Than I do. <laughs> Even though I had to remind you of his name. Getting his name. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, the the doctors offered him the new flu vaccine and he just slapped the nurse around the face. He was Uh, that disgusted. He slapped the nurse. The doctor handed him the flu vaccine, but he (laughs) decided to slap the nurse around the face. Yeah. She was was sitting at the desk minding her own business. (laughs) Yeah, it was her lunch break. I mean, nothing is more heroic than randomly slapping a woman in the face for no reason. But that's what gained the love of this wonderful comic uh, and snot boy. Oh, I thought you were going to say the love of the nurse. I thought this was going to be his love interest. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, that, I mean, they do end up getting together in issue uh, 26. But uh, spoiler for people who haven't read yes. The Adventures of Snot Boy and Onion Man. Yeah, he so, does get together with the so, nurse. Yes, so Snot Boy is a man that can fire snot out of his nose and yep. um, it, it, he can attach it to faraway objects, swing on it. He can... I, I, I was going to say web people up, but that's not the right phrase. He's, he can snot people up. Yes, in, um, in a big... A knot web. And he's constantly in the worst possible conditions, sw- sweaty, always feeling too hot or too cold. His eyes are puffy, he can barely see. Yeah. But Onion Man can, when he burps, yes. fires an, a fully formed onion out of his mouth towards yes. his enemies. yes. He can also cry on demand. Well, yeah, obviously. Um, with his, He's un- constantly feeling like he's chopped a bunch of onions up. So basically both him and Snot Boy are constantly got tears in their eyes, puffy eyes, red eyes. They're both basically blind. Yeah, pretty much. They're, Which makes us the not- most inspirational story ever. It's two, you know... Blind superheroes. I, again, there's no other. There's no other example I can think of, of that. No, I think we have uh, created a new branch of superhero comic here. Exactly. Yeah. When when we go in and pitch him, we should say he shoots out a web-like substance, and he's a blind superhero. Imagine that. But um, I mean, unfortunately, we can't because this is an existing comic book character that everyone obviously has heard of. Even even people that don't like superheroes have heard of him. He's ingrained into public consciousness yeah the only reason they haven't made a film series from it is because it's too good exactly you you just couldn't replicate that not with all the cgi in the world it just wouldn't look as good they've been i've been reading actually a magazine um you know superhero monthly and they're trying to make a film series but they know they can't do it with cgi so they've been injecting flu into a bunch of orphans to experiment how to get someone to sneeze that much Oh, to actually make the super uh, superpowers a reality. Exactly. Ah. And they've been force feeding onions to those same orphans to see if they can get them to belch the onions back out again. I've noticed that we do uh, have a lot of, um, yeah, we seem to have a lot of orphan abuse. If you like comic books, you'd imagine that everyone is an orphan. Uh, so, yeah, you, you've realised now that um, you're going to get one of these superpowers and you love them both so much, but you've got to decide this isn't a if you if if i have to this is a which one sh- can i have exactly that was the phrase i was looking for maybe that's what we should change the name of the show to can i have both can i have both? thinking back over some of the previous options having both would be terrible <laughs> i i mean actually no one of the previous options was either a cow's head or cow's body so if i had both i'd be a cow <laughs> And I'm pretty sure I said in a previous episode that I'm a horse. So we would just be a couple of farm animals. Exactly. It would be the perfect podcast. We should have gone with that, Kyle. Then this podcast would really take off. Imagine the novelty of two farm animals talking over the internet, mooing and neighing at each other. 
But unfortunately, that's just not the way life has gone. Sometimes, sometimes you have to accept reality uh, as the way it is. And the reality is that you're about to get a superpower. Yes, the reality is I've fallen into a vat of toxic waste with a microwave and a comic book and have gained the powers of the people in the comic book because somehow the printed pictures on the page mixed with the toxic chemicals in your brain that is just science in a nutshell thank god i didn't fall in with a copy of the lord of the ring because i've come out an elf or golem or golem <laughs> i already look enough like him uh, which of these would be the best option i mean they're both brilliant they're both dreams come true on my entire life since i was since i was a little boy i used to run around the house sneezing at my mother pretending i was snot boy and oh she'd laugh and laugh and laugh and then she went to the mental asylum um and she just keep on laughing she hasn't stopped laughing since i always remember stuffing my mouth with shallots um like a hamster and then just what the hell is a shallot it's a mini onion how can you not know what a shallot is why do you know so many weird words? They're not weird words. These are normal words that everyone knows. A, a more what was it earlier? A mortarboard. A mortarboard. A more, oh, I'm sorry. A, a mortarboard and shallot is uh, too highbrow for you. <laughs> yes, I, the richest man in the world, have had a very low education. <laughs> Let me know if I use words that are too big for you in the future. What's the future? It's like. A time that's not now, but it's going to be. Ooh. It's an interesting concept. But again, I feel that you're stalling. How would you use these these superpowers to your advantage in daily life? I mean, what is the reality of living with these abilities? Like, um, to retain these snot-based powers, I have to be constantly ill and sneezing and sniffly or like i said carry around with you a gigantic pepper grinder (laughs) the the world's big no i basically have to constantly have access to toilet paper i've got you know like the andrex puppy i've got one of those endless toilet rolls you know a tardis based toilet roll um that i've taken from home and i'm just carrying around in my pockets it's just a giant stream of toilet roll following me from home I mean, it would make my secret identity quite obvious. People would just have to follow the toilet roll to find out who Snot Boy is. Here's a question. Can you burp on command? Can you just burp? Or do you have do you have to just wait for one to appear? I have to wait for one person. I've never been able to burp on command. Can you, Kyle? I can't. Um... No matter how, how hard you've tried. I mean... I try every day. Every single day. I'm hoping one day it's just going to come. It's like whistling. You just you just blow and blow, and then one day you can just whistle. I feel like burping is more than just blowing. <laughs> I don't think I've ever burped then. <laughs> that's that's the thing about Onion Man um, is that he's constantly got onion juices, and you know, basically always like a. Um, like a, like a frying pan filled with oil inside of his stomach. The gases are always building up, so he's always on the on the verge of burping. If he tries if he tries to hold in a burp for more than sixty seconds, he will explode. That, like uh, flu medicine, is his weakness. He has to be burping, so he can't he can't um, talk for more than sixty seconds without stopping to burp. He can't have um, whenever he goes out with his beautiful lady. Molly Mushroom, he, he has to burp constantly. And his breath absolutely reeks. I mean, that is another one of his powers. He can shoot onions out of people, but also he can he can just make his enemies pass out from the smell. And I mean, if he needs to burp right then and there, and he's still got a lot of time left before his next scheduled burp, he could always just drink a big bottle of Fizzy Pop. Fizzy Pop? Who calls them Fizzy Pop? <laughs> What do you call it? You're a fifties American, are you? <laughs> but um, yeah, he he is he has one of those um he has a utility belt with um little satchels filled with fizzy pop that he's <laughs> that's that's what it is in comic books though they're just labelled fizzy pop it's not like oh yeah because they, legally they can't use the um you can't use brand names. So yeah, whenever he really need, whenever he needs to um, again have the most powerful burp to really take down his greatest enemies. When he does his super special attack. Yes, the ultra mega belcher. 
when he does his UMB. <laughs> UMB. Um, he has to down a bunch of fizzy pop. But yeah, both of these amazing, brilliant heroes, obviously, like every good hero, like 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 every good literary character, like a Shakespearean novel, their their strengths are also their weaknesses. Yes, that is true. So living your life constantly sneezing, living your life constantly burping and firing onions at people. I mean, that's the thing as well. Um, Snot Boy can't just sneeze like a normal person. Every time he sneezes, it is powerful and violent. Oh, yeah. Um, If he's just having a... He's chatting up at uh, this nurse that he likes. She's forgiven him for slapping her in the face. And, um, (laughs) yeah, they're just having a nice normal conversation. And then suddenly he feels his his nosy senses are tingling. Yeah, his nosy sense is tingling. And uh, he just explodes and she's just covered in snot. Does she then still want to go on a date with him? Of course. Have you, you've not seen his, his beautiful face. He, you know, he's got bright ginger hair. He's covered in freckles. He's got glasses. Um, he has asthma. Glasses. He has a wonky eye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his, he sneezes so often, his nose is basically broken and out of shape. He's um, just got the one eyebrow. It's just that big monobrow that goes across his he's entire got forehead. He's got crooked brown teeth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I nice mean, and brown. He uses uh, he uses brown toothpaste, especially for them. <laughs> brown sauce. Mm. I um, mean, that's all he really eats is brown sauce. Good old snot boy. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's but yeah, best. you want you want one of these powers, and you're going to get one of them. You lucky, lucky person. How would you personally use them? I mean, snot boy can swing through the city from his nose, and that's not at all excruciatingly painful. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is digging into the inside of your nose. I mean, where does snot come from? It it's right at the back of your nose. It's, it doesn't come out of your brain, doesn't it? Though <laughs> does it? But the, it's one of life's greatest mysteries. We'll never know where snot comes from. No one will ever know. It's just this magic substance. Snot is like the dark matter of the human body. We scientists have theorized for years about where it comes from is there a pocket dimension inside your skull does it it, is is it from the hand of god himself who knows i'm gonna go for yes (laughs) i mean prove us wrong (laughs) prove us wrong youtube what are we on this is no this is a podcast (laughs) <laughs> I thought we were doing a. I thought we were doing a live stream for a minute there. No, 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 no. Nothing to do with this. This show, just in general. <laughs> YouTube proves us wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't mention this before, but um, Carl Carl has a mortal enemy with every YouTube star ever. Yeah, every single person on YouTube. I want you to prove that they are I'm like wrong. His, they are like hit. Carl is basically like a superhero, and every YouTube star is his legion of villains. Yeah. Oh, who would be your villain? I mean, my greatest enemy. Yeah. Is probably puppies. Yeah, yeah. I did. I did gather that from the last episode. <laughs> from but our... I always, I always come out on top, Kyle. <laughs> you do. I swear never to stop fighting for all of humanity against the scourge that is sweet, lovable, happy puppies. Uh, the true villain of my life is nature and oh yeah that's true Uh, we forgot you hate all trees apparently (laughs) yeah and the sooner we can cut down these rainforests the better well give it give it another six months kyle (laughs) we're almost there i know i know everyone's everything's really working in my favor at the moment uh yeah just just buy everything with palm oil in it you know buy the fruit and veg in the as much packaging as possible um it's really important to me so i just want to put that message out there and hopefully make sure that you always throw out those um those ring those those plastic rings that you get um (laughs) yeah put throw them into the ocean throw them in as many oceans as possible yeah make sure as many uh fish get caught yeah and, and also stop recycling oh yes just just stop if there's one mission that me and carl really really believe in yeah it is that renewable energy sources recycling throwing away rubbish is the wrong way to go who wants nice blue skies and green grass do you know what i want light pollution who wants to see the sky as it really is no one it's horrible 
Yeah. Seeing stars and planets. No. All those stars out there reminding you how small you are. We want to stay in our bubble, our bubble of light and light pollution in big industrial cities. The bubble of pollution on the planet. So we're going to live in our bubble, protected by Snot Boy and Onion Man. And we will live there as long as we like. We will live there for the whole ten years until the Earth dies. Yeah, and I mean, who wants to live any longer than ten years anyway? It's becoming a bit of a drag now. I keep telling my one-year-old nephew, (laughs) you don't want to be eleven. Eleven? It's horrible being (laughs) eleven. Now that's the worst. Uh, so anyway. We've got an off topic talking about how much we want the world and everyone to die, Kyle. Why did we choose these characters for ourselves? <laughs> when you said, let's go on the internet and put out a podcast and we could create whatever characters for ourselves we like. Why did we choose the worst people in the world? <laughs> We started off so nice and innocent with fighting kangaroos. and The beginning of this episode started off so nicely. You awed at my, at my introduction. We try so hard to be good, but in the end, evil wins. <laughs> that is another fact. I've just thought... Well done. I've been trying to do that for years. It's, it is quite difficult, especially talking to you to stay on topic <laughs> with anything. I am. I mean, actually, that's my other nemesis. Rational thought. <laughs> That is my greatest nemesis. <laughs> yeah, that, I think both of ours, to be honest. Um, trying trying to stay on one topic for more than 30 seconds, that is our true enemy. Um, but no, I've just thought that uh, if you had Onion Man's powers, you, you could theoretically never have to buy food again. Obviously, if you don't mind just eating onions. I was going to say, I, I could everything I eat would taste of onions. It would just be onions. You would just you, you could uh, burp up an onion, then eat oh, it oh, because it sort of materialises. He, he um, always has food in his stomach. You're right, so he yeah. doesn't need to eat at all. But does no. he? But does he eat the onions because he's firing them out of his stomach all the time? I mean, he could fire them into a big net, like loads of them, and then just collect them up, chop them up, and have onion stew. Yum. Yummy. There's, no, there's, no, there's nothing more tasty than a regurgitated onion that you've chopped up. But what about Snot Boy? He's covered in snot. He can't eat a single meal without snot covering it in... I mean... Yeah, that's kind of gross. And he... It's delicious is what it is. I mean, what, what young boy doesn't dream of eating nothing but snot? I think that was just you, Nathan. <laughs> I think I would go with the... I was trying to think... You know how like it's the Amazing Spider... I was trying to think of like a word for Onion Man. But I was trying to think of a word that began with O, and I can't think of any. I mean, you, it doesn't begin with O, but you could say awesome. awesome. I know, that's exactly what, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, yeah. that sounds like an O. <laughs> I mean, ordinary begins with O, but he's not... not... <laughs> He's definitely not ordinary. That is, that is, a, that is a terrible adjective <laughs> for a superhero. The ordinary I am ordinary adjective. man. <laughs> I can't think of anything. No. You're just going to have to go with I guess awesome... he has the awesome onion man. I mean, it's yeah, it doesn't need to be the same letter. So, so you're, you're going to be awesome onion man. I think I'm going to have to go with the awesome onion man. Because, yeah, like you said, always able to eat onions that you've spat out of your own mouth. Yep. Having amazing breath that you know really makes you stand out from a crowd. Well, the crowd stands away from you. So you you wake up in this bubbling toxic waste, and uh, you feel y- your stomach's a bit rounder, more onion-like, glowing. I'm already, you know, like like in um, like how science works. I'm already covered in the costume, which is um, basically a giant onion costume. <laughs> With a cape. It's just like what people, um, you know, when people have to stand outside with a big sign saying "Come to our store," and they're dressed as the mascot. You're just in one of those big onion suits. I'm, I'm just in a big onion suit. There's a hole for my head, yep. and my arms, and my legs. Other than that, is just <laughs> yeah. a big onion. I can roll down a hill at my enemies. <laughs> Oh, that's an ama- that is an amazing visual. Just you in this costume. Like, I, I imagine it's, like, very big, just, like, uh, that your forearms are sticking out and just the bottom half of your legs uh, and your little face just looking out. But, um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, fighting enemies uphill is amazing. I just bowl down at them. I'm not so great fighting them uphill. 
that's a bit tricky. So, so you wouldn't want the snot powers? No, I think on reflection, the ability to um, constantly smell like onions. Yeah. I mean, I do like onions. Yeah. Versus the ability to constantly be covered in your own snot. They, they both make me so desirable. So, yeah, you, you wake up, you're in this costume suit, and you're like, oh, wow, I've become Onion Man. My greatest, favouritest superhero. Um, and straight away a villain appears and you just breathe and he passes out. Cops turn up and you hand him over and you... And I say the classic Onion Man catchphrase. <laughs> Insert catchphrase here. <laughs> That's his classic catchphrase. And you say, you say your uh, classic catchphrase and that shallot. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like the classic catchphrase of insert catchphrase here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it, you, you're the superhero. You know what you said. So that was how you spent your morning. It's been, it's been eventful, I will admit. I mean, I have to admit, um, sitting at my desk to record this podcast review in a giant onion costume is a little bit difficult. I am currently wedged between my desk and the chair, and I cannot get out. See again, that is that is quite an adorable um, <laughs> <laughs> image to my, envisage. My, I'm I'm high above the ground, and my little legs are sticking out of the <laughs> onion costume. I can't quite, I can't reach the ground. You're, I'm just you're, kicking wildly. Yeah, you're just kicking back and forth. They're just swinging <laughs> underneath no, the chair. I'm not even on the chair. I'm not even on the chair. I'm on my back in the on the onion costume, and I can't get back up. <laughs> I've fallen over and my legs and arms are wailing around wildly. Oh, you're like Bender on Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> I am adorable. You are. I mean, you'd want to hug me, except I stink of onions. Oh yeah, no one's going to go anywhere near you. But you are adorable. There is a visible cloud of smell around me. <laughs> Your Instagram page is, like, taking off, but actual physical contact with real people, no. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you you are now Onion Man. How do you feel about that? I feel powerful, Kyle. More powerful than you could possibly imagine. You feel powerful. You look adorable. Where, wherever wherever fear strikes, wherever evil dwells, wherever other ca- classic hero phrases are said, I shall be there. Unless it's on top of a hill, then I can't get up the hill. No, but th- you can definitely bowl down it. For all downhill residents, I will protect you. Yes. You are like a the bowling ball of justice. <laughs> that is another one of his um of his little side names. You know, like how all superheroes have side names. You know? Yeah, o- Onion Man in parentheses. The web slinger, the man of steel. I am the bowling ball of justice. There you go. I mean, I don't have time for this podcast anymore, Carl. I now have responsibilities. The onion signal is up in the sky. I must go. Well, I'm back. I've just saved that um, that burning building full of orphans. More orphans. Again, orphans. There's so many orphans. You'd you'd think it's the only, you'd think I'm just unimaginative and I can't think of new <laughs> things to say. But no, it's just that there happens to be a lot of orphans around me. It is interesting that we work with a hell of a lot of orphans for this podcast. Yet none of them get paid. Uh, wait, did you say none of them get paid? Yeah. We basically, they're basically our unpaid interns or a bunch of orphans. Yeah, we, well, they're doing it for experience, you see. I'm not sure this this um, this um goes in line with the superhero code, having a bunch of children. <laughs> well, actually, no, no, they're all my sidekicks. Yes, that's what it is, sidekicks. And then it's experience for when they become superheroes themselves. Exactly. There you go. I'm just trying to think of my sidekick. What goes with onions? Mushrooms. They're all little mushrooms. Yeah, there was already uh, Onion Man's wife, Molly Mushroom. Oh yeah, of course. So you you've just got to find the real life version of Molly Mushroom. I've been looking for the I've been looking for my Molly Mushroom all my life, Kyle. <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Molly Mushroom was a babe. But now is not the time to think about true love and mushrooms. They they go hand in hand. <laughs> now is the time to deal with your predicament, Kyle. I mean, you know what's happened, but. The audience at home doesn't. Yeah, you need to fill them in. I'm, I'm well aware. As you know, Kyle, you were picked as the winner of Sexiest Man of the Year by We Ran Out of Time and Had to Pick the First Man We Saw Monthly. I know, I'm so proud of that. I rang everyone I know the second that came out. I mean, I agree with it, uh, obviously. <laughs> I married myself uh, last Perhaps week. I mean, yeah, it's been months of waiting the six. 
thousand other men in between you and the magazine company, but they finally got to you. Me. <sighs> did you just did you just swoon at yourself? Of course I did. Me. Ooh, what a hunk. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I you know, people uh, listening to this won't know this, but I am surrounded by mirrors. <laughs> My entire house is just mirrors. It's like a fun house, but it is. It's brilliant. I mean, it does mean that when it's very sunny, there is basically bouncing through the house like a laser. Yeah, I do often get scorched. I have lost a few family members to the giant laser. Basically, you've built yourself a giant death ray inside your house. I'm the supervillain of this piece. You're Onion Man, and I'm this evil supervillain that's built this death ray. You're my greatest nemesis, Sexy Kyle. (laughs) (laughs) What is that, my superhero name, Sexy Kyle? The the only thing that I could think of, but yes, we're stuck with that now. Continuity, remember? (laughs) Yeah, we can't change it. Can't be Mirror Man, can't be anything else. No, Sexy Kyle and (laughs) Onion Man. (laughs) You're so vain, you don't even realise... That you're doing anything. No, I don't think I'm doing wrong, but I'm killing so many people. Every time I open the window, the laser beams just shoot out and destroy (laughs) an entire village. Well, that, not just the lasers from the mirrors, but also your shiny white teeth are so shiny. Every time you smile at people, the the twinkle is so bright, it burns out people's corneas. Yeah, I thought everyone's. Oh no, mine are are brown, remember? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but that's because all you drink is brown sauce all day long. But enough about how we're both such incredibly attractive men. <laughs> yep, those um, comparisons were identical. <laughs> um, you yes. are about to be on, featured on the magazine cover. Uh, yes, good. You're about to go to a brilliant photo shoot. So you've decided to... Um, you know, to spruce yourself up a bit, to have a bit of a me day. You've, you've had a manicure, you've dyed your hair, you've, in, mm-hmm. you've injected scorpion DNA into your face. Okay. And you've, de- and you've decided to get yourself a tan. Oh, finally. It's about time, to be honest. I've been feeling a little pasty recently. You're only red. <laughs> you, need, you need a bit more colour, Carl. I, w- I want a sort of David Dickinson hue. The image of the, you know, incredible handsomeness. Um, mm-hmm. Is handsomeness a word? Yeah, I'm sure that's a word. I mean, I love how you say, yeah, sure, and ever I say, is this a word? About, I'm sure you haven't done any research. Well, I mean... <laughs> with me that it's a word. It, it really doesn't matter. You don't know what a shallot <laughs> is. I could say anything oh, yeah, and you'd right. believe it. I know, I know basically ten words. <laughs> It's it's amazing how you formed an entire story here. I mean, you have had to really edit the. Um, you basically recorded me saying a bunch of garbled nonsense and then had to Basi- edit it together. Basically, the way this podcast works is you just read the dictionary and then I just <laughs> chop and change all the words. <laughs> I just chop and change all the words to make a coherent podcast. Yeah, you've asked me to pronounce every letter. In every possible way you can pronounce the letter. Yeah, every inflection. Uh, a. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you basically just sound like a caveman when you're doing it, but it works perfectly in the edit. I mean, yes, exactly. So anyway, I've gone to get a uh, Oompa Loompa tan. <laughs> and so, yes, you've gone to the your favourite tanning place. Um, oh, yeah, Frederico's. Frederico's. Um, so you're in the tanning bed, but you've forgotten... About your extreme super mega narcolepsy. You know, it's so easy to forget how you keep falling down escalators and um, falling asleep eating meals. Yeah, um, collapsing into my broth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Into my plain broth that I eat every night. As long <laughs> as it hasn't got onions in, I'm fine because obviously onions are my enemy. Oh, that really hurts my feelings, Carl. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if we can be friends anymore. That, that, that was a burn. Well, you know, that's how the greatest superhero team, uh, heroes and villains begin they're like good friends and then suddenly something happens and they both become mortal enemies exactly you're the you're the uh what's his name harry osborne to my peter parker there you go did you like that reference i did like that reference well done i'm very surprised i uh could draw on my limited knowledge of comic books I mean, if I wanted to be really nerdy and pedantic, I would point out that um, that Harry Osborn is the son of the Green Goblin. I mean, he has also been the Green Goblin. But again, we're really getting off track here. Kyle has just edited out the last 20 hours of me talking at him about comic books. 
and correcting me on the. <laughs> I'm well versed in Spider Lad now, and I know everything <laughs> there is to know about Spider Guy. Um, so no one has to contact me and tell me that I'm wrong. I know everything there is to know about spiders. <laughs> it was called Sp- Spider Spider. Exactly. I, I have educated Kyle in the way of the um the, the spider thing. But we're not talking about that um, Patrick Pinker. We're talking about you falling asleep in a tanning bed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Got, that, that was so long ago now that I had completely forgotten about it. But yeah, let's, let's get back to that. You've been, so five days later, you wake up yeah. and you find you've basically mostly melted. I've melted? Yep. Okay. Well, what do you think would happen if you were in a tanning bed for five days? I don't know. I didn't know I was made of butter. <laughs> That's why you're so delicious, Kyle. But yes, um, you are now basically a giant pile of goop. You're, you're, um, you can, you can still walk and talk, but you're just a big pile of goo and slime. Okay. You've got one eye drooping down. Your mouth opens up halfway, but you don't want to let your fan down. My fan. You're, you're one singular fan. I mean, that, that would be you. But you don't want to let him down, your mega fan. <laughs> I don't want to let myself down. Exactly. He, he's, been, he's supported you your entire life. He's always believed in you. Oh, yeah. Sometimes he sends you creepy, stalky, stalkery messages. Yeah, he watches me <laughs> while I sleep. I watch <laughs> with, a, with a series of mirrors. We've, always, we've already established you live in a house of mirrors. That is an amazing image, actually. I'm just like imagining you lying in bed, staring at a mirror very intently, <laughs> watching yourself sleep. But anyway, away from that adorable and not at all psychotically scary image, <laughs> you decide you still want to go to the photo shoot because you don't want to let your fan down. Of course not. I'm sexiest man of the year. By we had to pick the first man we saw monthly. Exactly. I don't see any uh, any problem here. And the easiest solution to this is to build yourself a holographic generator. Well, nat- naturally, yeah. You, you know, you, you get yourself an old Game Boy and the wire you find in bras and um, a few other bits and bobs here and there. An old Sega Mega Drive. Exactly. A couple of different sized batteries. A couple of those magnets you had as kids where they, they repel each other. And all together, you know, that's what you need to build yourself a holographic generator. You don't have much time, Kyle. You have about an hour to get to this um to this photo shoot. So you've built the generator in, in five minutes. Simple enough. But we'll put we'll put we'll put up a video on YouTube uh, how to I would never put anything on YouTube ever. Oh yes, I forgot, I'm sorry. We'll put up a video by podcast. But yes, yeah, so you've done this. You've built yourself a holographic generator, but you haven't had much time to program it. So you've only been able to use the preset options in this handmade holographic generator. So you can either disguise yourself as a giant tarantula wearing sunglasses mm-hmm. or the girl from the ring. A giant tarantula wearing sunglasses or the girl from the ring. Human tra- tra- human sized tarantula. So giant as in terms of what a tarantula size is, but not giant in comparison to humans. Yeah, it's not like a um it's not like a Godzilla size kaiju. No, 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 no. No, no, no. 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 I mean that would be terrifying. A Godzilla sized tarantula. You're only human sized. Yeah, so it's it's basically mim- Mimicking me, but I could only preset it to uh, a tarantula in sunglasses as well. Yes, I mean, ironically, the sunglasses only cover two of your eight eyes. <laughs> yeah, I did think about that. It's, it's, it's not like it's not like it's a specially made pair of sunglasses. That no, 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 eyes. it's a normal pair of sunglasses. It fits you terribly. <laughs> it's just sort of placed precariously on the tarantula's face. If these were your real eyes, it wouldn't protect you from the glare at all. He's not really wearing them for... Um, for protection from the sun. He's wearing them because he's a cool dude. Yeah, it's more of a style thing. Is the girl from the ring exactly as she was in the ring? Oh, yes, exactly. I mean, you know, other than the fact that she's wearing a backwards baseball cap. <laughs> oh, right, okay. But other than that, she's exactly like from the ring. Um, she's, you know, constantly discombobulating her body. She's constantly half uh, in and half out of a uh, TV screen. Oh, yeah, and she's always moving back and forwards in, in incredible speed. Yeah, in jerky mode. I'm basing all of this off of like two adverts I think I saw 20 years ago. <laughs> I've never actually watched The Ring. 
Neither have I, which is... Well, it's too dangerous. If you watch it, you die in 10 days. I couldn't risk that. So, yes, you are going to the photo shoot, and you have to choose which of these two options you think is the best. Which one represents... Neither one of them looks like you, but which one do you think represents your personality the best? I mean, a tarantula in sunglasses, it's kind of... it's. It's edgy. It's different. It's. It really is edgy. There's so many edges. There is. Um, so many legs. So many eyes. So many everything. There's <laughs> so many legs, and they're all constantly moving around. A tarantula in sunglasses. That's kind of cool. That's. I mean, he's walking around on two legs. The rest of his legs are like arms. All. Yeah, they're all just up in the air, holding. Uh, you know, at the circus where they have those. Um, sticks where they're spinning the plates the other arms are just doing that oh that would be amazing he's spinning five thousand plates but remember kyle he only has eight arms how can he spin five thousand plates that's that is very impressive i'm not great at maths okay eight plus eight times eight is 20 million isn't it but but you have to remember this is a hologram you don't actually have eight arms you're not actually a girl that just came out of a well I don't know how many times I have to tell you this, Carl. You're not a dead girl that fell into a well. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure I uh, died in a well and I am <laughs> a female minor. I mean, I'd be very annoyed if you died in a well, Carl, because you're basically my only friend. If my only friend was a ghost, that would be very annoying. <laughs> then I, w- I wouldn't technically have any living friends. No, and I would also be a child. <laughs> Oh yeah, she was a little girl, wasn't she? It's very sad. Did she? I'd, uh, obviously, neither of us have seen it, but I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that she didn't I mean, speak we're both either. Cowards, Kyle. I'm far too, far too much of a coward to watch a horror movie. If we watched The Ring, we would be dead in ten days, and we wouldn't be <laughs> able to do. We wouldn't be able to make this immaculate content. No, it was that was a sacrifice we had to make. It was we either just... watch The Ring, do a podcast. We weighed exactly. up the options. And we thought that talking about murdering puppies and destroying the environment was the way to go. Yes, and we were so committed to this, so committed to this podcast, that we decided not to watch this movie back when it came out 20 years ago. Yeah, we knew we were going to do this podcast back when we yes. were, but back, back before we had even met. We knew that one day <laughs> we would meet each other. We, and we, we would... lived our whole lives. I mean, how old was I when I met you? I think I was 17. <laughs> 16, 17, we, we, you were about the same, I think. Wow. But no, getting back to the question, somehow, I'm, I, I can't even think of a good segue, so I'm just going to go to it. <laughs> I mean, that was the smoothest segue of all. Pointing out that you don't have a segue is the best segue. I've always said that. Yeah. And people have always been confused by me always saying that, because I've always said it with no context whatsoever. So I'm either the girl from the ring or a tarantula in sunglasses. Exactly. I mean, really, you're a giant blob of deformed disgustingness. Oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm hiding you that. Disguise from yourself as a tarantula wearing sunglasses or the girl from the ring. So I can't even um, tamper with it to make them look more like me at all it is literally just the tarantula or the girl exactly i mean especially especially for this photo shoot you have to go immediately you don't have time to tamper so i've told everyone presumably i've told my mum my dad i've said i'm going to be on the cover of this magazine and they're getting yeah they're getting really excited about this but when they look at the cover they're either going to see a tarantula or a the girl from the ring well that's easy enough to explain you just have to, you know, when you turn up, just say, oh, hey, it's me, Carl. I fell into a vat of toxic waste with a spider <laughs> or a, a vat of toxic waste with a dead girl. <laughs> this is this is the story you're going to tell people to explain why you suddenly look like a tarantula or a dead girl. Because the story of you melting in a tanning bed and having to create a holographic generator is too, too unbelievable. Yeah, people, that's bizarre. Yeah, it's much more believable that you've been mutated into a giant tarantula that wears sunglasses. Or a, or a ghost. After this, I can. Th- this is going to be my new persona. It's like it, it's stuck forever, basically. Um, you are you're a genius inventor, but you're also an idiot. So you've invented this brilliant technology. The second you've invented it, you've forgotten how you did it. Yeah, and 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 I've said to people, this is me. Like I'm getting my photo taken by professionals and saying this is me. So even if I had. Uh, managed to... I mean, you keep forgetting to say who you are, though. You just keep saying to people, this is me. You don't mention, I'm Kyle. You just keep going up to people saying, 
this is me this is me isn't that how you introduce yourself to people <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's nice to meet you what's your name this is me i don't make many friends <laughs> well my only friend is a giant tarantula or a dead girl so i'm gonna go for dead girl and i'll tell you why oh well please do so as a tarantula fair enough uh, it's kind of scary but he's also kind of cool he's yeah he's cool he's got the sunglasses and you know he he could be taken for someone you know who's just a bit down on their luck <laughs> but a dead girl that's terrifying there's nothing more scary than a silent black and white rings under the eyes dead girl i mean that's why they called it the ring because she's got rings under her eyes that's what I assumed. Yes, this is what we both have assumed from never watching the movie. Yeah, I like that you've picked a uh, question based on something you have no idea about. <laughs> but that's besides the point. So yeah, as this dead girl, I would be absolutely terrifying. And I could scare anyone I wanted. I mean, do you want to be terrifying? Oh, definitely. Is that a desire you've long had in your life to scare the living shit out of people? Well, yeah, you, you could go and haunt someone's house as this dead girl and uh, get them to move out because it's so terrifying. And then you've got a free house. You'd have to learn how to be able to disappear very quickly. It's a hologram. I just turn the machine off. Yeah, but then they just see a giant glob of, of muck. You're still you, Kyle. You're still the disgusting goop that you are. Ah, right. So the uh, hologram is surrounding me and uh, masking the real me. What did you think it was? Did you think... I thought I was hiding outside of the window and uh, <laughs> projecting <laughs> this image in. And I was just sort of using like a uh, microphone or something that I'd attached I don't know. I mean, that's a brilliant image. I mean, the, inside, <laughs> there, there's a photo shoot where they're taking a photo of this dead girl constantly twisting her neck around, contorting. I think that's what she does. And just generally being creepy. Yeah. yeah. But outside of the building is this giant gloop of human skin holding a remote control and people are just walking past, horrified. I, I just lift up a flabby arm and just give a little wave I don't as they know go how, past. I don't know how um, in, innocuous you think you're being, Carl, but you're not. You're really not. You're I covered that myself car- in leaves. <laughs> you're trying to do that thing in cartoons where you hide behind a lamppost. <laughs> but I'm this massive, massive flesh. Exactly. No, I, I'm, I'm still going to go for the girl. I would like to terrify people. People are scared of tarantulas and spiders, but not in the same way they're scared of dead girls. That is true. Everything we say on this has been rigorously studied and scientifically applied. We yep. took a bunch of people, threw them into a room filled with corpses and spiders, and recorded the screams. So I'm now a dead girl. We have both transformed for the better we've both gone through a life-changing transformation and we have both become what we've always wanted to be i've always wanted to be a superhero that can roll down hills yeah and you've always wanted to be a dead girl yeah and i think we're both better off for it together you and i carl we will we'll make the best dynamic duo ever do i still want to be your arch nemesis i think i mean you might be too scary to be my arch nemesis now <laughs> you might be in the middle of your evil plan and i burst in through the window but then i see you're a ghost girl and i'm like no nope, the hell with this you can hold that bus full of that that bus full of orphans hostage all you want yeah back to the orphans definitely i, I think we really should move out of orphan city kyle the, the only people we have to interact with are orphans like all we can do is we, we we can protect the orphans we can save the orphans we can use the orphans as psychics we can burn the orphans as fuel but and we've tried every single one of those things again science you, you can't you can't know what's the best thing to do about doing everything so you know was it was it better to boil this orphan alive in acid or look after him and give him food the only way to find out was to try both i mean boiling him alive he, he did taste better he's like lobster <laughs> i mean i said I, I gave the orphan food it was other orphans i mean it's the best way to create superheroes though you just run every test under the sun until suddenly one day the orphans gain superpowers i mean yeah that was the main reason why i was scooping around in the tip i was looking for a way to gain superpowers yeah you wanted this you wanted to be onion man i've been irradiating spiders inviting them but no 
never got superpowers. All it took was a tumble in the tip. So yes, we have both gone through amazing transformations. You are Onion Man. I am Dead Girl Boy. Dead Girl Boy? Does that work? I mean, yes, you're Dead Girl. You are technically Dead Girl Boy. That is your super villain name. Yeah, and I just live in a house of mirrors. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you'd want to live in a house of mirrors anymore now, Carl. You've got to look around and see a dead girl in every single mirror. I would just terrify myself. Whereas I, I'm living in the um, the onion cave. It's just a cave filled with mountains of onions. It's a giant onion. You know, it's like James and the Giant Peach. I found a giant onion and I scooped a cave out of it. You've got little parasite friends that just grew with the onion. And you have magical adventures and they sing to you now and again. They just randomly break out into song. <laughs> you have a little onion bed made of many onions. It is an amazing life. I can't tell you how brilliant it is. I actually am jealous of you and your... (laughs) Usually, at the end of these episodes, you've come out uh, bad and I've come out on top. But this episode... What are you talking about? So far, I've had a cow's head. I've had a penis tattooed on my face. I've murdered a woman. (laughs) Yeah. And... Um, oh yes, and I and I've talked to the devil. So far, I've lived the best life possible. Still, I've always preferred mine. I mean, I think what was it? I got a buckaroo. I've tried to I've tried to make you forget that one. That wasn't a great choice. I got I got sent uh, like thousands of pounds in the post. Wait, what? Um, Who sent you thousands of pounds in the post? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was one of my uh, choices. Um, you married a voluptuous bee woman. Yeah, I married a uh, the most beautiful woman in the world. Yeah, I got to star in a, uh, the biggest hit movie of the summer or Christmas. Oh God, yes. So yeah, I've never been jealous of any of the outcomes, but today I wish I was Onion Man. Alongside being a superhero, making you jealous, Carl, has been my life's dream. You've been too happy for my liking, Carl. Every time we meet up and I ask you how you are, and you say, I'm good, I've had a really good week, I feel seething, angry rage inside. I want you to have a horrible week, Kyle. I hate you so much. This has been If You Had To, though. (laughs) Join us next time. (laughs) For another fun-filled adventure with two best buddies. Yay! Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Kyle M. Bennett. That's Kyle underscore M underscore Bennett. You can follow me at Nora Man, which is N-A-W-H-E-R-E-M-A-N. But I'm going to soon be changing that to Onion Man, of course. How else are people going to know who I am? It's not like I'm walking around in a giant onion costume and I smell like onions all the time. Or I live in a giant onion in the middle of the city. (laughs) Who can possibly find me? My secret headquarters. You live in the middle of New York City in a giant onion. (laughs) The villains are all going, we need to find Onion Man. He's been ruining our plans. But where does he hide? And who could he possibly be? (laughs) My secret identity is just me in a giant onion costume (laughs) wearing a pair of glasses. (laughs) But no one can tell. But I still stink of onion. I'm just the smelly guy at work. If a, um, a madman's running around with guns, killing people, no, I can't be bothered with that. But if someone's stealing onions, I will be there. This has been If You Had To, though. I've been Kyle. And I've been Onion Man. You have. I've been a dead child. 